While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. We're lost in some place pretty. And peaceful. <laughs> and friendly. Hey, come back! Huh? Where did this come from? And what is it? It's a scroll someone's been writing on. It rolled down from up there. Come on, we'll take it back. Yeah, and maybe that guy up there will tell us where we are. And when we are. And the crowd said, Hey, mister, we found your... Whoa! Huh? There. No, here. Got it. Look, there's another. <laughs> We found your scroll. <laughs> we call him Moki, but you can just call him little Mr. Graceful. I'm sorry, but everything's okay now, right? Yeah, yes, Moki. Thank you. Please, come and sit. I'm Derek, and this is Margo. My name is Mark. You had me worried. These notes are from my talks with Peter himself. My whole gospel is based on them. Your gospel? Mark. When you say Peter, do you mean St. Peter? Well, he was a fisherman like his brother Andrew, and he was there, a witness. And yes, he was a saint. You mean what you're writing, your gospel, those scrolls? Well, are you writing the story of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ? Yes. I don't know as anyone has written it yet, and his story's got to be told. I was just writing about his betrayal, his death, and resurrection. The story of Easter. That's why I came here to the Garden of Gethsemane, for inspiration. Here? This is Gethsemane? The garden where Jesus prayed the night before he... Yes, over there is Jerusalem. It's almost exactly as it was about 35 years ago, when it all happened. Mark, will you read some of what you're writing, please? It was on a beautiful, bright Sunday morning when Jesus sent two of his disciples for the donkey, a special donkey he would ride into the city of Jerusalem that day. There it is, just where he said we'd find it. Well, what did you expect, James? That Jesus would be right about everything else and wrong about a donkey? Wait a minute, what are you doing untying that colt? Andrew, tell them what Jesus said to answer if we were challenged. The master has need of it. <gasps> oh, well, well, take him then. But I should warn you, that donkey's special. He's never been ridden. Never even been sat on. <laughs> we know. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, the city seemed to come alive with expectation. Crowds gathered in the streets and grew larger and larger. Look! Here he comes! Oh my yes, Jesus! Jesus! Jesus. 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 He's coming! 
What is it? What's going on? Who's coming? It's the prophet Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, the miracle worker. He turned water into wine. And fed thousands with only a few fish and a few loaves of bread. Some say he's the son of God. The son of God. Blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. Glory in the highest. God bless you. Bless you, Jesus. 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 city who did not praise Jesus. They feared him. Priests, politicians, men of power. Oh, popularity like that makes me nervous. I heard someone call him the son of God. You're a priest, Balak. Isn't that against your teachings? Yes, but you saw how excited the people were. It was a triumph, Zenal. The people dote on him. They take in his every word. The people can be manipulated, particularly by the man you serve. The high priest himself, Caiaphas? Shouldn't we tell him about this man who causes blasphemy and creates commotion in our streets? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, you're a wise man, Zeno. Come on, somebody had better keep an eye on him. What are they going to do? They felt certain Jesus would do something that would upset the most important religious people in the city. And the next day, that's exactly what he did. In those days, much business, buying and selling and lending of money was done in the most imposing building in Jerusalem, the House of Prayer. That next morning, oh! the worst fears of those in power were realized. Out! 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 Ah! What have we done? You have offended the house of God. Is it not written? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves! Was I not right, Caiaphas? Were we not right to warn you of him? Oh, noble high priest. The people are moved by his new ideas. Blasphemous ideas that threaten all of us. His followers multiply day by day. We must do something. We can't. Not now. After the Passover has been celebrated, we'll see what happens. These leaders were frightened by the unusual things Jesus said and did. They were jealous and angry, and they began plotting for a way to get rid of him. Two days after casting the moneylenders from the temple, Jesus was dining in a small house in Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem. Thank you for the meal, Simon. Are there many coming to see me today? Yes. The whole countryside seems to know you're here. I fear for you, Master. The leaders in Jerusalem, they're looking for you. Yes, yes, we've heard. There are rumors. Judas heard. The Pharisees have given orders for anyone to report where you are. Should we leave? No. There are those who would see me.
Lord Jesus, it's not a rumor any longer. The priests have issued a commandment for anyone who knows where you are to report it. And they'll be well paid. You must leave at once, Lord. Let's go. Hurry, Let's my go. Lord. Hurry. Come, Jesus. Please. Hurry. Now. No, I will stay and join in a Passover Seder here in Jerusalem. You may do what you will. We will stay and celebrate the Passover with you, all of us, wherever you wish. And I'll tell you how to find a safe place for the dinner. Very well. Good. As you say. Thank you. Jesus sent two of his disciples into the city and told them when they met a man bearing a pitcher of water to follow him. Whatever house he entered, they were to say to the man of the house, the master asks, where is the guest room where I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples? Jesus said he would show them a large upper room furnished and prepared. And all was as he had said. So in the evening, Jesus came into the city with his 12 disciples and they sat and ate. And everything was exactly as Jesus said it would be. So, here we are. Ah, oh, safe and sound. Shh, the master would speak. One of you will betray me. No, not I, never. Is it I? 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 It is one of you twelve who dips bread into the bowl with me. Take, eat. This is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen. After that ceremony, the first communion, Jesus took the 12 disciples with him to the Mount of Olives. Tonight, you will all fall away. No, no never, never, Lord. Never. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Not I, Lord, never. Everyone else may fall away, but I will not. Truly, I say this to you. This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. No! Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. Yes, yes sir. Right. That's right. right. Never. Yes. Rest here at the garden entrance while I pray. Please, I ache in my heart and in my soul. Stay here. Keep watch while I pray. <clears throat> we might as well be comfortable on our watch. things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. 
yet not what I will, but what you will. That's all. You fell asleep during Mark's story. Oh, I I'm sorry, but... I... But you were tired. Derek and Margot told me you've traveled far. That's the truth for sure. Well then, Moki, you're no worse than the Apostle Peter himself. He fell asleep too, right here in this same garden, when he was supposed to be keeping watch over Jesus. He did? Yes, but when Jesus returned from his prayers and woke him, Jesus was gentle with him. Oh, Peter, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm sorry, Master, I... Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. No, Lord. You said he'd be here. Where is he? In the garden. Follow me. The one I kiss is the one you want. Lead him off safely. Yes, yes, get on with it. My betrayer comes. Master! Master! Judas! Take him! Stand back! Peter, put your sword away. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Don't you know that I could ask God for 12 legions of angels and they'd come and save me? But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled? Take him to the high priest for trial. against you. Say something. Bring in another witness. Another false witness? Yes. I heard the prisoner clearly say he'd destroy the temple we built with our own hands. And in three days, he'd put up another made without hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, what say you to that? I have one more question which I know you must answer. Are you Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you shall see me sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Blasphemy! We need no further witnesses. What say you? Guilty! They just found him guilty, sentenced to death. Who? Jesus, the prophet. You know, you were one of those who followed him, weren't you? Oh, uh, no. I don't know him at all. I'm sure I saw you leading him into the city last Sunday. You've got me confused with someone else. I've never even seen the man. Excuse me. Hold! Sure, you're one of them. They all speak with the accent of a Galilean like you. I've told you all. I don't know him. Let me pass. Truly, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Oh, the poor man. 
Yes, he had indeed done the unthinkable, exactly as Jesus had foreseen. But the others all ran away. I wouldn't have done that. Well, that's true. At least Peter took a risk and followed after Jesus. Right, he was the only one who could be questioned. Sure, he said he wasn't one of the disciples, but only so he could save himself. And you know what else? I think Jesus knew that all along. Come on, what happened next? Yes, please go on. Well, the disciple who betrayed Jesus was, of course, Judas Iscariot. Ooh, I don't like that guy. Judas heard that Jesus had been sentenced to die. Listen to me, please. Ah, the betrayer. Don't tell me you've come for more money. You won't get it. No, I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. Innocent? Ha! You should have known. How much was it we paid him exactly? Just 30 pieces of silver. Well, you got yours, Judas. Take it. Take all of it. The money is cursed. The man known as Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Jerusalem, was the only man who could order the death sentence to be carried out. He could also prevent it. The earthly life of Jesus was in his very weak hands. So, tell me, are you the king of the Jews? You have said it. Look here, fellow, do you understand what they're charging you with? How am I to decide what to do with you? Pilate! Pilate! Where is he? Pilate! <laughs> That's those jealous priests who condemned you. But the people like you. Your entrance into the city on Sunday was quite a triumph, I hear. Wait a moment. Pilate had an idea. Each year at Passover, it was the practice to release one prisoner. He would give the crowd a choice. Release Jesus or a murderer named Barabbas. Pilate was certain the crowd would choose Jesus. He was wrong. Tell him, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. Get us, Barabbas! Barabbas, Barabbas tell him. Barabbas, Barabbas. The people have spoken. Free Barabbas. Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. Well, I wash my hands of the whole thing. He could have stopped it. Why didn't he? He wanted to satisfy the crowd. That was his excuse, Derek, but nothing could have stopped it. It was the son of God's mission to die for us all and to rise again as proof that in his death we have forgiveness of our sins. What follows is painful, but the ending, the ending is blessed above all things. <laughs> his robe. Well, let's play for it. <laughs> it's mine! My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? Father, 
hands. I commend my spirit. It is finished. Truly, this man was the son of God. Even now, his people are putting his body in a tomb. We're certain in the dead of night, they'll steal it out and claim he's fulfilled his promise. His promise to rise from the dead within three days. So? What if they stole the body and told the people he rose from the dead? That deception would be worse than the first. We've got to prevent them from getting anywhere near him. Oh, I see. Oh, very well. You may have your guards. Seal the tomb. There. Now we stand guard so nobody gets in or out. Three days later, after the Sabbath, the women were on their way to the tomb at dawn when... Ah! What? What is it? What's happening? Look! Fear not. The angel of the Lord has rolled away the stone. Your Jesus who was crucified is not here. He is risen. Look, see the place where they laid him. Oh, I see, I see. For 40 days thereafter, he presented himself to many people throughout Judea. <laughs> Sitting on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty.